Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the December 2022 sheet load printable. I hope you'll stick around, watch my process, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, December 2022. In that video, I showed you my first set, talked about the supplies I used, and told you how you can download the free printable. If you haven't yet seen the debut video and you're interested in the free printable, make sure to check out the description box below where I have a link to it. I'm so excited to be back today with the process, and don't forget that my team of collaborators will be joining me in sharing their first sets. They'll have videos here on YouTube and posts over on Instagram. Now to see those, you can use the hashtag here in the title on YouTube, and I have a link to the same hashtag in the description box below. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. The December 2022 sketch is a little bit special, and not only do I have some extra notes for you how to put it together, but this month is a three-page printable, unlike the normal two. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use that third page of additional instructions to put your cards together. You can see here on the sketch there is a diagonal piece and that just needs a little extra explaining and maybe a little bit more help to get that on the card correctly. And I will be explaining all of that in today's video. As I get started on the process, I will tell you about any special tools or products that I bring in, but as for the main ones, they are in front of me here and I did talk about them in a little bit more depth in yesterday's video. As always, if I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be cutting the pattern papers per the instructions and because mine have the branding strip on the bottom, I do need to cut that off first before I can make my cuts. The first thing I'm going to do is cut my paper into columns. I will have two that are three and three quarters inches wide and two that are two inches wide. Before I make my first cut, I do make sure that my paper is in the orientation I want it on my cards. For me, the shiplap boards will be going horizontally. So I do the two three and three quarter inch cuts and then two two inch cuts. Now I do have some scraps left over for this and later I will show you how I use those inside of the cards. Once those are done, I'm going to cut them into their final heights. The three and three quarter inch columns get cut into pieces that are five inches tall, and the other two pieces get cut in half at six inches tall. Now, don't forget, you don't need to remember any of these dimensions. They are all on that free printable, which I told you how to get in yesterday's video. I'm just showing you here how to make all the cuts and put the cards together. I cut the second pattern paper in the same way and then it was time to move on to the card stocks. These first two pieces of powder blue cardstock will be cut down for CS1 and we are going to yield four four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces from each of the sheets. To get started, I cut it into columns of four inches wide and those pieces got rotated and cut down to five and a quarter inches tall. Now there are some scraps left over from this and again you can use those to decorate these cards or maybe another one you'd use later with the same cardstock. 
I chose the same powder blue for CS2 and will be cutting each sheet into four pieces that are two and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. To do this, I'm going to cut each piece down to six and a quarter by 11 inches. And then once again, I need to rotate those pieces and I will make cuts at two and a quarter inches until I have eight total. CS3 is going to be the next thing we cut, and these will be for the sentiments. Now this does call for a half sheet of cardstock, but this is also a great one to use up some scraps you might have in your stash. For me, I'm going to go ahead and cut this at the three and a half inches wide. And then I do want to show you that before off camera, I brought out some sentiments that I thought I might be able to use and I held them up to my printable. Because I do print this at full size or 100%, I can see if it's going to fit on that final piece. Now there is some extra white space around my sentiment, but later you will see me fill those up with some of those accent snowflakes. Now to finish those little strips, I'm going to cut them to three quarters inches tall using the line to the left of my cut line just to make it easy to slide right to left with that cardstock. And finally for cutting, you'll need some card bases. Now originally this called for four pieces of cardstock that you would cut and fold in half, but I did have some already made off screen, so I got out eight of those. Now mine are top fold, but you could definitely do side fold if you prefer that. Once all of my pattern papers and cardstocks were cut down, I decided the next step would be to do all of the matting. Piece B gets matted with CS2, and pattern paper piece A gets matted with CS1. Just try to get a nice even border all the way around. While I continue to adhere these pieces together, I thought it would be a good time to stop by with a little celebration. In November, I did have some channel members who reached one year of membership. So I just wanted to take a minute to recognize them here on my channel and to give them a great big thank you. I am so honored that each of you choose to support me here each month. Not only do you keep me crafting here on YouTube and sharing, you also keep sheet load free for all of my subscribers. Your support is greatly appreciated, and I hope that you're enjoying membership and its little perks. Channel membership is a great way to show your favorite creators that you appreciate what they do. Here on my channel, I have memberships starting as low as $1.99 a month. You can check out the join button below this video, or I do have a link in the description box to find out more about the perks and levels. Probably the most favorite perk, which does start at the $1.99 level, is the sheet load visual archive. You can see it up on screen now, and what it is is thumbnails of each month's sheet load with a direct link to download it. So if you're looking for past issues, you don't have to go back and watch all of the videos to find out the links and passwords. You have this one-stop shop as long as you are a member. For the next steps, you will want to have your additional instructions page handy. We're going to start by cutting down the tall skinny matted strip per the instructions there on the left. We're going to make a cut at 2.625 inches or 2 and 5 eighths inches from the bottom. Now 2 and 5 eighths is the mark that is halfway between 2 and a half and 2 and 3 quarters. You'll see there we're going to cut that one matted piece into two separate pieces. Now we will need these together later on, so do make sure that you set them aside in their pairs. I continue cutting each of these strips before we move on, but don't get rid of that instruction sheet just yet. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add the diagonal pieces to our larger matted piece. 
Now I have mentioned it a few times, but you'll want to make sure that you print at least this page at full size or 100%. And that's because you're gonna want it to help you line up that diagonal angle. So we'll start with the top or the smaller piece and I put some adhesive where I thought it would only touch the card and then I put my larger matted piece down on the template and you'll see here it fits just perfectly and then I know exactly where to place the diagonal piece. I'm going to do the same with the larger one or the piece that goes on the bottom right just lining up the outside with that piece. Now they are perfectly, well, maybe not perfectly, but as close as they can be, aligned diagonally across the card. Now later we will cut off that excess, but for now I'm just going to keep adding the diagonal pieces. Now you can play around with what works best for you. I tried it a few different ways. You'll see me here in a bit. I put some adhesive on the corners of my larger piece and just down the center of my skinny strip, but do whatever feels best and works best for you. Now something I might do differently is perhaps I would put a piece of acetate or clear cardstock between the printable and my pieces of cardstock or my adhesive because I did get a few times where it did stick to my printable and I just had to tear it off but it ended up working good in the end. Definitely do what works best for you. After all of the diagonals were on the card fronts, I brought in my non-stick scissors and trimmed off the edges. Now this was when I realized I probably need some non-stick scissors that have longer blades, so I'll be shopping for those later. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a pair and what brand they are. Once all of those corners were snipped off, I brought in my card bases and added the card fronts on the center of each one. Now I did use white cardstock for my base today just to help make writing on the inside a little easier, but if you do use a darker color that might be hard to write on, you could always add a piece of white cardstock and maybe decorate it a little bit with some stamps. Now it's time to get the sediments ready for the front of our card. I will be using my Misty so I can set everything up once and then stamp it eight times. Now for the sediment, I am gonna put my piece of white cardstock down in the bottom right and just make sure each time before I stamp that it is nice and snug down there since there really isn't room on this piece to hold it down with the magnet. I stamped the sentiment with Gina K Designs in the navy ink and once I had all eight of these done, I wanted to add a little bit more decoration on there. So for this next step, I will be using the snowflakes in the set to just add a little extra color in the white space around the sentiment. Now once again, because the magnet can't hold it down and I need my stamps to kind of fall off the edges, I needed some extra help. So for that, I brought in the Brutus Monroe Tailored Expressions Stick and Stamp Mat, which is just slightly sticky and will hold my sentiment in place while I get my stamp set up and then while I ink it. And then when each one is stamped, I can just pull it up and put down the next one. Now for this, once I had my stamp set up, I did make sure that each time when I went to re-stamp that the corner, the lower left hand corner, was matched up with that right angle that's kind of already printed on that grid. That just ensures that each time they're going to stamp in the same place. This mat is totally worth, I think it's only like seven or eight bucks, so I would suggest next time you're shopping at Brutus Monroe or Tailored Expressions to add one to your cart. I am not affiliated with either company, but I do have a link to the Tailored Expressions one in the description box below. So far my card is pretty flat, so I decided that I wanted to add my sentiments with some foam tape. For this, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 8 inch width and added a strip to the back of each one. Once those were all on there, I burnished that release paper on the back, 
fold it off and then place it onto my card. Now this is definitely a place where you can decide where you want to put your sentiment and make it your own, but I did go ahead and stick pretty closely to the sketch, putting it down in the lower right hand corner. Now you could also add some die cuts above the sentiment, but because the snowflake paper kind of added that touch, I did just add the sentiment and left it as is except I did need to add some bling. So I brought in Honey Bee Stamps Shimmer and Shine Enamel Stickers. About half of them are a silver glittery clear, and I added three of those to the front of each card, just for a little touch of sparkle and shine. I continued adding a trio of enamel dots to each of the card fronts until all eight were complete. And here is a close up look at the cards and you'll also see how I decorated the insides with some of those leftover pattern paper scraps. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this month's cards and got a few tips along the way on assembly. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit my team of collaborators by either using the hashtag in the title here on YouTube or the link to the Instagram hashtag. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.